Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Pathfinder Beginner Box. And today we're continuing through, so, in the Game Master's Guide, and we're going to go over the magic items in the Pathfinder Beginner Box. Let us begin. So this is basically some of the simple things about how magic items are. Buying and selling magic items. It, even though the magic items have a list of price, doesn't mean they can buy them anytime they want. Magic items in Pathfinder are hard to find in certain, in certain world, towns or worlds or even cities. Because magic items cost a lot of, cost a lot of money to not much money. Just like finding a magic item can be hard, selling a magic item can be hard to find a proper buyer. Magic armor plus one is 160 gold pieces, which just increases your AC by one. This this simple magic item basically is, is an example of why it's so hard for to, for people to buy magic magic items as well as sell them. They're very expensive. They usually cost a lot. We'll continuing over around the rest of the magic items as what as as the rest of this video. So just do you wanna know that? Shadow armor is a plus one magic item, must be a leather or high number light armor and has a black appearance, a blank black appearance, giving you a plus one to stealth checks. So it just gives you a plus one armor and gives you advantage plus one to stealth checks. It's two hundred and fifteen gold pieces it costs. Slick armor, this ma plus one magic armor is slippery, as a little co coated with a thin film. If I like, you gain a one plus item bonus to acrobatic checks to escape. So, 205 gold pieces. Sturdy shield, 100 gold pieces. With a sturdy design, excellent craftsmanship, the shield has, is harder to break and destroy. The shield has a hardness 8, HP 64, and ET 32. So that's a little better. Magic weapons. That's that's next on the list. Magic weapon plus one. Gives you a plus one status bonus to hit. Striking weapon. Gives you a plus one item bonus to, hit, to attack rolls you make with it. And it deals the di two dice damage instead of one. So it just basically make, so it basically increases your damage and your hit to range. Which just costs a lot more than the magic weapon plus one. Special magic weapons. Or just not plus one adding. Ghost Touch Weapon. This weapon can be any type of melee weapon. It's just plus one striking weapon. And is it particularly effective against incorporeal creatures like ghosts? It is a stick of a weakness to ghost touch weapons. Incorporeal creatures can touch, hold, and wield ghost touch weapons, unlike most physical objects. Hunter's Bow. Stealthy hunters and rogues can use this plus one magic short bow to attack from, from hiding. If you use this bow and strike a target that can't see you, and you get a critical hit, the target deals an extra 1d6 damage. This is in addition to sneak attack damage if you're a rogue. So it's basically some extra damage if you're sneaking and they don't see you. From, from rogues. Poisonous dagger. This plus one striking dagger has an image of a snake's emblem on its blade. When you critically succeed in an attack roll with the dagger, magically fangs emerge and poison the target, dealing 1d4 persistent poison damage. It means you take poison over time unless you make a 
some kind of DC save to try to get rid of it. Retribution Axe. This blade of a ma plus one magical great axe has been designed with a human skull. Whether a creep could damage you with a attack, the soul changes its appearance to look like the face of that creature. You gain a plus two circumstance and bonus to your next damage roll against that creature before the end of your next turn. Because the face reshapes each time you're damaged, you get an additional damage only if you're your attack, the creature that damaged you recently. So basically you get a better chance of damaging the creature if it, the familiar creature hurts you first. So, Returning weapon. This weapon can be type of thrown weapon, club, dagger, hatchet, javelin, light hammer, spear, star knife, or trident. It's a plus one magic weapon and when you make a throw strike against it, with it, it flies back to your hand after strike is complete. So basically, a boomer, kind of like a better boomerang. Returning weapon, plus two. This weapon is like a returning weapon, but it's plus one. But it's a, it is a plus one striking weapon instead of a plus one magic weapon. Smoking sword. Smoke continually bounces from this one ma plus one magic long sword and hit with the sword deals an extra 1d1 fire damage. You can use a special attack with holding the sword to commune to blades ed edges to light a fire. When you do that, stoke flames until the end of your turn. The blade deals 1d6 1 extra fire damage instead of just 1. After you use this action, you can't use it again for 10 minutes. Storm Hammer. Sparks of sparkling electricity are from this one plus one magic item Warhammer, and the he head from Crystal Fist and Thunder. Any hit with a hammer deals one extra electricity damage. You can use special action while holding the hammer to transform into sparks into lightning bolts. And when you use that turn, until the end of the next turn, the hammer deals 1d6 extra lightning electricity damage instead of just one. After you use this action, you can't use it again for, next, for 10 minutes. Next uh, on the list is consumables. Basically, you use them once and they go away. First, we're going over ammunition. The spark climbing bolt. The shaft of this bolt is wrapped in fine twine. When the bolt strikes a solid surface, the twine uplines and enlarges into a fifty long rope, securing fashion to the surface and the bolt struck. The rope can be pulled free with an interact action, which requires a successful DC-12 athletics check. Shining ammu an ammunition. This ammunition can be either an arrow or a bolt. When shot, it sheds a bright light, 20 foot radius, and dim light over the rest 20 feet for 10 minutes. If it hits a target, it strikes, causing the target to share the light in the same radius. The creature can remove the ammunition by spending an interact action, but the ammunition itself continues to glow for the rest of the duration until destroyed. Spell Strike Ammunition Mythical Mystic patterns of magic reservoir within the ammunition. You can activate the Spell Strike Ammunition to cast a first level spell in the ammunition into the ammunition. Using the spell's normal casting action, the spell must be able to target a creature other than the caster. If you activate the animation and successfully strike a creature within the same turn, the creature is targeted by the spell. If the creature is not a valid target of the spell, the spell is lost. The spell affects only the target hit, even if it would normally affect more than one target. If the spell requires a spell attack roll, use the result of your range attack roll with the ammunition to determine the degree of success of the spell. And if it requires a saving throw, the target attempts to save against your spell DC. Next is a potion, which basically you drink it and the effects activate. Healing potion. Healing potion 2 and healing potion 3. Just, bet. just you drink it and you heal a little. 
just different levels to it. Invisibility potion. You turn invisible for 10 minutes. Kitu can't see you, but they may be able to seek you or hear you or find, smell you or whatever else they can use. Potion of leaping. You can jump 30 feet each time you take a leap action. So basically you have, you're jumping like Mario. Potion of resistance. You basically gain resistance to a single damage type for one hour. So depending on what type of potion resistance you get, you can either take lightning bolts or you can take somebody swinging a sword really well and take less damage. Potion of water breathing. You can breathe underwater for one hour. Rhea Green Wormling Breath Potion. You can basically unleash a cloud of poison as a breath weapon. It deals 2d6, 2d6 poison damage, and creatures must take a DC 423 fortitude save. Basically. So basically, if you don't succeed that, you take half. You take full amount of damage. After you use this breath weapon, you can't do so again for 1d4 rounds. So basically, you can use a breath weapon normally for one hour as if you could use it as, a, as, a, as if it was on a character sheet. Next is scrolls. Basically, a scroll contains a single spell which you can use. And then, like a spell scroll, like just using a spell automatically by, by yourself. These are probably the what, some of the cheapest items. Scroll first level one. So basically, you cast a first level spell, scroll level two, you cast a second level spell. And it, it goes all the way up to the highest level spells. The higher you go, the more expensive they get, of course. I forgot to move this. So these were the other potions, and these were the spell scrolls. Some other consumables are a bird feather token. What basically means you can you can summon a bird to deliver a message to for you. Holy water, which basically if you you can deal, it deals one d six plus one good damage to a target and one good damage for every other creature within five feet of the target. It only deals damages undead though. <laughs> So, if you're facing a lot of undead in your campaign, Holy Water might be good for you. Wands, they like are, they can be used once per day, but they're not like consumable like spell scrolls. Most of the time. So, wand a first level spell, you can use the spell once per day, on, and then you, and it recharges. One second level spell, you can use it once per day, and it recharges. Held items. Now this is where it gets a little it gets a little interesting. Held items take up a slot. Basically means you can't have unlimited like held items on you. You have every you can't have like three goggles on your face or three belts on your on your on your on you or have three shields. These take up a slot on your body and you can only use one slot for each one. So let's see what some of these held items are. Everburning Torch burns it basically burns constantly requiring no oxygen and, and generating no heat. The flame can be 
covered or hidden, but it never goes out. Pyrite at it's basically a rat shaped pyrite statue. When activated, the statue transforms into a flesh and blood giant rat. You can use the following actions. You can basically transform it. It basically can use two actions and no reactions. Otherwise, if you don't tell it to do anything, otherwise it runs and cowers. So you have to tell it to do something. If it's slain, it reverts to its animal, like it reverts into its statuette. Or it can't be used until One week has passed. If it's destroyed in such a wet form, it's destroyed and its magical properties are lost forever. Skeleton key. Basically, it can be used as a replacement for thieves' tools. When you're attempting a thievery check, it gives you a plus one pick up while picking a lock. And gifts gives a plus one to a thievery check. And if it's broken during, well, well, you critically fail at the thievery check, it reverts to normal thieves' tools. Belt of good health. Basically increase your maximum hit points by four. Bracelet of dashing. Gives you a plus one to Acrobatics check, and you can increase your speed by 10 if you activate it. Demon Mask is next. Gives you a plus one to intimidation checks, and you can cast a fear spell with it. Goggles of Night. Can give you impressive, give you plus one perception checks, and... You can gain dark vision for one hour. Hand of the Mage. That's your cast Mage Hand. Out of disguise. Makes you disguise some as someone else. For one for one minute. Well, that, that's at one minute. After one minute, you transform into something else for about a while. But it doesn't change your voice, scent, or mannerism. Only your vis visible appearance. I have the Magi. You get a plus one to Arcana check, and you can cast it Tech Magic at will. Healer's Gloves. You get a, a bonus to Medicine checks, plus one, and... You can do 2d6 healing point. Heal, heal for an action. Necklace of Fireballs. You throw it, you pick up, you take something up, a bead off your necklace, and you throw it, and it explodes in a fireball. Dealing. 66 fire damage and a 20 AC 21 basic reflex save and you can cross it anywhere from 70 feet ventriloquist ring you gain a plus one deception checks and you can you can you can throw your voice for 10 minutes you can make your voice seem to come from somewhere else in the room instead of there and that is the magic items in the Pathfinder Beginner Box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did.